Hi guys, this is Miranda from Speaking Through the Fog. Um, today I'm going to do a um, big episode introduction. I promised after the chronic fatigue one that I would do another segmented one, and it's been um, a few episodes now. So this one, though, isn't going to be a long, drawn-out one like chronic fatigue was. One that I had to segment because... Um, there's just too much to talk about. This one is segmented because I'm going to be doing interviews with different people. So, um, as an introduction, I will say that um, I am interviewing the people important to me in my life to ask them how my sickness affects them because one thing that people don't really realize it is that um, when somebody gets really, really sick, it doesn't only you know, affect the life of the person, it affects everybody around them. And uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, because it's not a very well supported one by the government or by um, doctors and stuff, The um, uh, it's financially and emotionally and physically draining for the people around them the person who's sick because they have to take care of them. So um, I'm going to be asking a whole bunch of them questions. Um, it's going to be my family and my fiance and even at the end my um, daughter. So um, I'm going to start out um, the introduction by asking myself these questions that I'm going to ask my family. Probably be a little bit changed up each time because I kind of, you know, have to tailor it to their answers, but um, just a general gist of what I'll be asking, and you can compare their answers to my answers to see, you know, kind of maybe how I feel about things, how I viewed the whole um, timeline of me being sick, how they did. So um, the first question I'm going to ask myself <laughs> is, do you remember um, when I was healthy? And um, what was I like? And I um, I would say when I was healthy, I was, um, you know, a, actually a very active person. I uh, worked for the Forest Service. Um, I was um, very organized. I am now, but um, I had, I was the um, leader, trainer of the program there, and I wrote a uh, document, a training document that um, is used today. It's kind of neat to have an official government document that's got my name on it. <laughs> and um, I was going to school. I had a 3.75 GPA, and um, I would go to the gym and swim and work out and um I was just like get up and go let's go hang out let's go party or whatever you know I was super like active so um that was me before I got sick and uh was Miranda a sickly child is my next question I have on here and um actually yeah I, I when I was little I had one episode where I did pass out and have to go to the emergency room, but nothing was wrong with me. And I was always just kind of, I couldn't stay the night at people's house more than a night or I would get really super sick. So, um, I wasn't necessarily like the most healthy, um, individual before, but I definitely wasn't like completely unable to take care of myself. You know, I just had to make sure I wasn't going crazy. But then even in high school, I mean, that was when I was a little, little kid. When I got older and in high school, I was just as crazy as the rest of them. So, um, when did I first started or when did I first notice my symptoms? Um, it is really hard to say because, um, it was on or around or right after I had my first daughter and um, when you're pregnant you're sore and tired anyway so um, that's you know kind of the MO of both being pregnant and having chronic fatigue and then right afterwards you're pretty tired just because you have a newborn um, I would probably I don't know because you know I was such a slow progressing onset that um, I mean, I, I was able to go to work right after my surgery, but um, I would say probably right after my daughter. It's hard to say. Did I worry back then? No, I didn't worry at first. I mean, I was kind of like, why am I getting 
this like weird foggy brain and I didn't know it was foggy brain at the time I would call it dizziness and that was the first big symptom was the dizziness it wasn't really being tired because I was always super tired from working super hard so um you know maybe I had to take an extra nap or sleep in an extra day but it wasn't anything like super noticeable I guess I should say um when did I first notice my health um issues were becoming serious um when I was pregnant with Ashlyn that would have been when I first noticed because I was passing out a lot at work and um even before then I was forgetting so much at my work like I would just I was getting lectured all the time because I do stupid and big things like leaving safes open and and um uh, not locking the door and um, leaving cash in the cash register and if anybody knew I was doing that it would have been so easy to just um, have the money taken from the store and I I do did dangerous stuff and when I was pregnant it got even worse my memory and I asked to be demoted and um, I was still really super hard working it was just the cognitive stuff was going crazy and I was foggy all the time and people would see me go white and pass out and they were starting to notice I was sick so that's when I would say I noticed I was getting sick uh, seriously um, what's the worst episode of me being sick that I witnessed well I witnessed all of them but um the worst one um I don't know I think it was when I passed out in front of my daughter um and my daughter had to run over and get um, my mom and they took me into the room and I was just too sick to even get out of bed and and comfort my daughter who was very upset and I I think it was then that I realized that this could potentially kill me someday if I don't get it figured out and taken care of and that's when the helplessness and the worry really set in and so for me I would say that was probably the worst episode um, not so much symptoms just for the psychological toll I would say how has my illness impacted me well <laughs> Considering it's my illness, it's impacted everything, every aspect of my life. Work, I can't work anymore. Um, family, my family has to take care of me. I'm no longer someone who takes care of people. I'm having a trouble even like taking care of my kids. And I'm not saying I'm having a trouble taking care of my kids because I can totally take care of my kids. It's then I'm sick at the end of the day because I took care of the kids by myself. So I can take care of them, but it's to the detriment of myself. Um, so, I mean, I can't go to the store. I can't cook some days. I can't go shopping and cook for sure anymore. I can't socialize. Um, it's just, it, I mean, every single, every day I wake up and think of my sickness. Even when I'm out and about and doing things I'm thinking of my sickness just because it's there it's it, I mean and if I don't think about it and don't think about oh if I do this then I can't do that or if or I'm gonna do this because I want to and I'm gonna just power through it if I don't think about it then I don't you know I pay for it later or I don't expect the repercussions of my actions like I go oh darn I shouldn't have done that earlier because I had this later you know so it's just it affects everything I mean more so than you would ever even imagine um how do I feel about me being sick frustrated helpless sad um terrified um angry <laughs> um I just, I don't, I'm like, I can't get sick. That's my main thing. I can't be sick. I have things to do. I don't have time for this bullshit. <laughs> I want to be able to go out and roller skate with my daughter, you know, and um, I want to be able to be present and be useful and not have to be 
taken care of all the time. So, yeah, just a lot of probably negative emotions. <laughs> um, I can't think of anything good about this. What worries me the most about my illness? Well, um, that I'm going to die um, one day, probably, and um, that it's not going to be a good death. It's going to be a death where I'm in the dark and in pain and don't want anybody around me and w wondering what the hell happened to get me here. So that's what worries me the most. Now, whether or not that's going to happen, probably. Uh, I, I want to say no, just to be optimistic, but nobody really has the statistics as to who goes severe or not and how it happens, so I don't know. I don't know how, I don't know how it'll be. I don't know if it's going to be an eventuality or not. What's the hardest thing to come to terms with when it comes to my illness? Um, having to stop. Not being able to do things. I just, I mean, I'm not somebody who's okay sitting in the room while other people are working. I'm not the person who's okay with people watching my kids when I should be in the room with them. I'm not okay with people having to do things for me. I don't like people pushing my wheelchair for me because I want to go where I want to go when I want to when I want to go, and so giving up control because I was already a control freak before. Take away even more control, you know, and people become control freaks when they're sick anyways. So I'm like a quadruple control freak. <laughs> um, what do you feel about chronic fatigue syndrome? Um, it's bullshit. <laughs> and I wish more people knew about it. And I wish more people cared. And I wish doctors weren't such a-holes about it. And um, it's serious, and if, if doctors would actually realize that people get as sick as they do, maybe they would take people more seriously, but they don't even like to acknowledge that. How do I feel about my doctors? Um, the doctors that I have are really good, but, um, I've had some really bad doctors, and, I have a general distrust for anybody in the medical community because they have their own agendas and you have no control of your health once you walk into a doctor's office. It doesn't matter if they're a good doctor or not. Um, because if you get any, you give them any resistance, they get pissed. So, I mean, it's kind of just, I mean, you're kind of helpless. Once again, you're helpless. What's my outlook on my future? <laughs> um, that's a good question. Um, I think the future looks pretty good, especially because I think I have a really good handle as to what's going on. I think it'll look better once I get on disability and can get some help. I think it'll look better once I get my own house and I can control my surroundings and not have people judging me if I'm not doing things right or and I can make sure that the house is child safe so I'm not having to be constantly vigilant over if the kids are safe or not. So yeah, right now mm, might not be so nice, but I definitely have hope for the future. Um and as far as advocacy for um uh, chronic fatigue syndrome goes, whether or not it, I like m myself doing it, I think it's awesome. I mean, of course I do. If I didn't, I wouldn't be doing it. So, um, I think more people should do it, and I'm going to do as much as I can while I can, um, and I'm sure that I'm going to overdo it, and people are going to have to push me back, because <laughs> that's just me. So, yeah, those are kind of the sum of the questions that I'm going to ask, and um, those are my answers, and I have uh, already have some knowledge that some of the answers are going to be a little bit different from other people. So that is my plans for the next few episodes of Speaking Through the Fog. Um, look forward to it, like my videos, uh, subscribe to my blog, and um, I'll see you next time.